All right, everybody. I'm uh, very happy to announce that I finally finished a book I was working on. It was called the, um, the Wuhan Lab and the Mad Science that Dr. Fauci funded. And it um, argues um, in favor of the uh, laboratory uh, origin hypothesis for the pandemic. I did a lot of research. Uh, this book is uh, like 763 pages. Um, I have 2,300 uh, sources, and I um, argue um, for the laboratory origin for this pandemic with um, 36 um, reasons, 36, uh, you know, in um, uh, um, evidences for the laboratory origin. So that's available. Uh, it took me about a month to write. I was doing lots and lots of all-nighters. Uh, I was working uh, day and night on it, and I finally got it out uh, in time. Unfortunately, it's been banned on Amazon. And so if you want the book, uh, you can't get it on Amazon. It's, uh, it's on lulu.com. I put a link to the book in the description of this video. Um, but the, uh, the cover-up is uh, carrying on. Uh, social media has been shutting down um, arguments for the laboratory origin of this pandemic, even though more and more scientists are coming out showing that this is not a, uh, a natural virus. And um, more and more information is coming out as to what they were doing in the, in the lab. So Facebook has been censoring. Twitter, obviously, uh, has been censoring even the president on different things. And now uh, Amazon is censoring. I told Amazon, because they emailed me, uh, I told Amazon that, um, you know, book burning is what the Nazis did. That's Nazi Germany stuff. Uh, you know, books should not be forbidden. Uh, knowledge uh, should not be censored. And so for them to say, you know, we're not going to make your book available on Amazon, um, it's, it's, you know, uh, communist style censorship and that's what they've been doing with this pandemic since the beginning and I document it in my book um, so my book like I said is 763 pages uh, uh, probably about 500 of those pages are a detailed timeline of the Wuhan lab um, everything that was going on before the pandemic started uh, they were uh, doing what's called gain-of-function research um, where funded by people like Dr. Fauci, they would find bat coronaviruses that are not infectious to humans, and they would switch out the spike protein on the surface of these viruses so that they could invade uh, human cells through uh, what's called the, uh, the ACE2 receptor. And so they were in the laboratory uh, experimenting with coronaviruses to make them infectious to humans when in nature they are not infectious to humans. Now, why would they do that? It was in the name of, um, you know, vaccine research. They're saying uh, these viruses might one day evolve the ability to uh, infect humans. So we should give them that ability now in the laboratory so we can experiment with drugs and vaccines so we might be ready in case this ever happens in nature. That's the cover story. Why, were, why was communist China interested in this type of research? It's not because they care about global pandemics. They certainly didn't care um, you know, about sending this virus all over the world when they, they closed off um, national uh, travel in and out of Wuhan, domestic travel, but they continued to allow international travel. So they weaponized the virus and essentially sent it out into the world, which wrecked our economy and other nations' economies. Um, and we're in the middle of a trade war with China. So why is China interested in this type of research? It's called dual-use research, or DIRC. Um, the government has different policies on it. It's, it's research that could be used for good reasons or for evil reasons. And so this gain of function research uh, is a dual use research that uh, th there's concerns at the time that they discovered it back in like 2011 that, um, that bioterrorists uh, could, could use this to cause pandemics. And Dr. Fauci back in 2011, 2014, 2016, um, 
he said uh, that you know the benefits of this research outweigh the risks. That the benefits of vaccines, the benefits of drugs, it's it's greater than the risk that we might cause a pandemic either by accident through a laboratory accident or uh, on purpose, you know, through, uh, you know, bioterrorism. Obviously, he was wrong. Um, and so I document in my book all these different laboratory accidents um, that have happened over the years. Uh, laboratory accidents are a lot more common than people think. In fact, there was a SARS outbreak in Beijing, China, back in 2004 that was caused by multiple multiple laboratory accidents. Um, there, there were um, uh, these researchers who uh, kept like injecting themselves with, with needles um, over the span of like two months. It was quite bizarre that, that there was like three or four researchers in this lab who continually injected themselves like they were keeping this pan, this outbreak going. And then and if you read the news back then, they said Dr. Fauci came out with a vaccine within 30 days, which they said was was just, you know, unbelievable speed because a vaccine normally takes 10 to 15 years. So it's kind of suspicious the way they come out with these vaccines so quickly. You know, Bill Gates and Dr. Fauci had a vaccine submitted for approval with Moderna or, you know, Moderna in like, uh, you know, 30 60 days. I mean, that's unbelievable. And it's because, well, Dr. Fauci was funding the Wuhan lab to do these, uh, this research on bat coronaviruses. And so he had all this information on, you know, what the virus is like. But so uh, the only known source of, you know, coronaviruses in Wuhan is the laboratory. Uh, it didn't come from the wet markets or the animal markets. Scientists have shown that it was the humans that were infecting the animals, not the animals infecting the humans. In fact, uh, they showed that from the onset of this outbreak, the genetics of this virus, uh, you know, the makeup, the protein of this virus is optimal for human infection. Uh, the spike protein on the surface of COVID-19 it has the strongest affinity for the human ACE2 receptor, meaning that it's, 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 it's a human virus from the beginning. It was more infectious to humans than, say, bats or dogs or chickens or, uh, you know, any other uh, pangolins or civets. Um, it was from the very beginning of this, and this was a scientific research paper that was done that showed the strongest affinity for the spike protein on COVID-19 is for the human ACE2 receptor. So that would indicate um, a laboratory origin. That would indicate um, gain-of-function research. The other thing is that um, there's sequences in this virus that are from HIV. Um, four specific sequences, especially one uh, that, and it's for the spike protein. So it's very strategically inserted um, genetics into this virus that make it more infectious and dangerous to humans. Uh, if you read the experiments of the Wuhan lab, like I document in my book, over the years, it, it was very common for them to use HIV in their experiments with coronaviruses, um, you know, to borrow parts from the HIV in order to make these vi uh, viruses infectious to humans. Well, the man who discovered HIV is a French Nobel Peace Prize winner named uh, Luke uh, Mag something. I don't know uh, how to, you know, it's French. Uh, it's uh, Luke L-U-C-M. Uh, and he, he's the Nobel Peace Prize winner for discovering HIV. And he came out and said, um, this virus cannot be natural because of the HIV sequences that are in it. He said that this is a this is like a, a watchmaker's precision. You know, these inserts of HIV are at the um, optimal uh, optimal inserts for human infection. So it shows not random mutation like you would see in nature through recombination of bats getting infected with the same viruses. It shows an intelligent design that that the mutations in the genome of this virus 
um, were intelligently designed for human infection. The fact that they can't find an intermediate host, there's no other known sources in Wuhan that have coronaviruses other than the laboratory, um, you just, you start to build the case and you start to see the big picture. So that's what my book is about. Um, it shows you the experiments that they were doing that uh, Fauci was funding them to do. Um, it shows you laboratory um, accidents in China, especially. In fact, this laboratory, the, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, um, was flagged as unsafe by two U.S. Uh, diplomat cables and um, also French intelligence when the lab was first being built had concerns that this Wuhan lab might be used for bioterrorism. Um, another report given to the government that I was reading and I put in my book says that this Wuhan lab is part of China's covert bioweapons program because China's a part of the bioweapons or biological weapons convention. Um, it, they're not allowed to stockpile biological weapons. Um, that's part of the agreement. But this dual use research is the back door. They can hunt down these viruses in nature and in, in the laboratory make them infectious to humans in the name of vaccine research, when in reality China is just stockpiling uh, biological weapons. That Wuhan lab has uh, one has, has a database or uh, um, a reservoir, a, a fridge, a freezer of 1,500 viruses. And so that's the dangerous thing. So my book... Um, you know, if you really want to know the truth about COVID-19 and the origin of this pandemic, uh, truth that people want to keep secret, China, communist China tried to cover it up. They were arresting doctors. They were arresting journalists. Uh, they've, they, they haven't allowed American investigators to go and inspect Wuhan. Um, Amazon banned uh, my book. Uh, YouTube has removed documentaries dealing with this. Facebook I, I wrote an article that Facebook said was full of uh, false information, um, and it was about Bill Gates and Dr. Fauci and the Wuhan lab and all of that stuff. And they put a, a label on it that it was uh, contained false information. Uh, they said for two reasons. They said, one, there's no evidence that it came from the lab, and two, um, there's no evidence Bill Gates had a vaccine that he submitted early on. And both, both of those are false. I mean, the fact checker was literally fake news. And so that's what you have going on. Like the same thing on Twitter with Trump make, made a post that mail-in ballots are the most liable for voter fraud, which they are. But Twitter branded that as, as false news because CNN said this or that. And so you have these fact checkers on social media who are um, censoring, continuing the cover-up and... You know, actually, Facebook had told the World Health Organization that they could have unlimited ads during this. Now, the World Health Organization, the biggest donor to them is Bill Gates. Um, and they, the, the director, uh, Tedros, ha was known in Ethiopia for covering up uh, cholera. Now, French intelligence has said that um, back in um, January, um, uh, President, you know, uh, Jinping in China there had asked um, Tedros to delay notifying the world. So the WHO was complicit in the cover-up of this outbreak. And, and so social media is now uh, continuing that cover-up. Okay. Yeah. Okay, baby, I'm making a video, okay? So, my book is a documentation of the history of the events that lead up to the pandemic, dealing with the lab and with Dr. Fauci and with Bill Gates and uh, off afterwards. In fact, yeah, my daughter's here. She uh, said she stepped in dog poop. So, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, Mickey, I'm making a video, so don't make any noise, okay? Go see your mama. Then, um, let's see. So, so the events that were leading up to the... Um, Bill Gates is concerning to me. He's, he's saying that we need to vaccinate 7 billion people, right? 
But if you look back at his associations with China, um, he's a member of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. So yes, why is, I mean, why is Bill Gates a member of the Chinese Academy of Sciences? Um, these, these are communists. I mean, this is a brutal regime that will arrest uh, pastors. Uh, they, they, they don't, you know, uh, hold our values of liberty and freedom. They want global communism. Why is Bill Gates a member of the Chinese Academy of, of Sciences? Well, um, if, you, if you research it, you find out the reason he got it. Can I help you? No. Uh, the reason he, he, he got this, this lifetime membership to the academy is because he was building a cutting-edge nuclear reactor in China. Um, China is on a campaign to uh, become a world leader by stealing as much technology and information as they can, cutting-edge information from the U.S. It's called the Thousand Talents Plan. It's why these professors across the country are getting arrested. They were recruited by Communist China into their Thousand Talents program, and they literally will steal information, cutting edge, you know, proprietary information, cutting edge technology, even viruses out of our American laboratories. And uh, China will send their students to American laboratories to steal our information, technology, and viruses. And so here's Bill Gates building a nuclear reactor in China, and then he had to stop because President Trump put a stop to it, and Bill Gates was all upset about it. Now, there's a dual-use capability there with nuclear reactors because through nuclear reactors, you can, you can get nuclear weapons. So you have Bill Gates essentially helping the nuclear program of communist China. And then you have Dr. Fauci funding the Wuhan lab, which was reported in Newsweek. Uh, I had known about that for about two weeks before it broke the news just by looking at grant records. And Dr. Fauci is funding the Wuhan lab, which is a covert operation for China's bioweapons program. So who, who are these people and why are they doing this? So you got Bill Gates and Dr. Fauci who are now trying to vaccinate 7 billion people and uh, you know they're in charge of the, the health of America. And yet these are the people that were, you know, helping the nuclear weapons and biological weapons of communist China. So whatever vaccine they come out with, I'm certainly not taking it. I don't, I don't need a vaccine. I have, a, I have an immune system. Uh, a vaccine could be round two. If, uh, if the virus was bad, sometimes the, the vaccine can make a virus even worse because you end up uh, developing an, uh, an overactive autoimmune response to the original virus uh, through vaccines at times. So more people could get seriously hurt and who knows what the side effects are. Even Bill Gates admitted, you know, look, we don't know if there's going to be side effects after two years. You know, they skipped animal testing. They went straight to human trials and they're trying to get it done in like, you know, uh, 12 months or less. So they said, look, we don't know if there's going to be side effects after two years. We just have to take the risk. Well, I'm not taking that risk. I, I don't need a vaccine. I have an immune system. Uh, I'd rather just uh, have the virus than to have the vaccine. But I'm concerned. Well, what is this vaccine going to do to people? If, if Bill Gates was, was helping China with their nuclear program and Dr. Fauci was helping communist China with their biological program, why are we, why are we trusting these people? It's concerning to say the least. Anyways, I'm trying to get my book out there because uh, this information needs to be told. There's a lot of history here that people aren't telling you. Uh, Dr. Fauci acts like he knows nothing about this Wuhan lab when he was the one funding it. He acts like he, you know, doesn't think a, a laboratory, uh, you know, origin or a laboratory accident or a, a laboratory escape is even possible when he knows I mean, he's the top infectious doctor in the country. He knows how often these laboratory accidents happen. He even helped during the Beijing SARS outbreak in 2004 that came from multiple laboratory accidents. So Fauci knows uh, more than he's letting on. There's something wrong uh, with him here, uh, something very wrong. So uh, click the link in the description of this video and uh, buy the book. You know, buy multiple copies. You can pass out to other people. 
Um, you know, it's a little bit of an, an expensive book because uh, I mean, it's 760 pages, and 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 the and the font the font was already s as small as it could go, and so it's well documented. I'm not I'm really not interested in uh, conspiracy theories that have no proof, no facts. You know, they're just uh, pulled out of thin air. I have I have no tolerance. Uh, you know, for that. And I wouldn't promote that. What I'm talking about here is well documented. The fact that there's that communist China launched a thousand talents program to steal our information and our technology, um, even our viruses out of our laboratories, that's documented facts. Another laboratory that Dr. Fauci funded is in Winnipeg. Well, the director of the, of the Winnipeg lab got caught uh, just like a year ago, sending the world's deadliest viruses to the Wuhan lab and uh, was removed from the lab and is under investigation for espionage. I mean, these are documented facts. Bill Gates really was building a nuclear reactor in China. Uh, Dr. Fauci, you look at the grant records, really was sending millions of dollars to the Wuhan lab specifically to experiment with coronaviruses and make them infectious to humans. Uh, the, the gain of function, uh, you know, gain of, yeah, yes, this is live right now. The gain of function research is well documented. Obama had put a pause on it um, during his administration. And, and wouldn't you know, he removed, he lifted his ban on gain of function days before leaving office. Days before President Trump took office. That's when he removed his, his ban against this type of experimentation in the lab. And then a few days later, Dr. Fauci was in Georgetown and he said, the Trump administration will have to deal with a surprise outbreak. That was in uh, 2017. So we're talking like three years ago. Right after Obama lifted his ban on gain of function research, Dr. Fauci declares that there's going to be a surprise outbreak. The Trump administration's going to have to deal with it. So things like that start to get suspicious. At some point, a series of coincidences starts to defy the odds of chance and, and a conspiracy becomes the best or most reasonable explanation. Uh, I'm not, you know, a conspiracy theorist, but I know conspiracies happen. The assassination of Abraham Lincoln was a conspiracy. The FBI spying on Donald Trump was a conspiracy. Organized crime, the mafia, is a conspiracy. Uh, conspiracies happen. Communism is a conspiracy. The, the, you know, there's no uh, doubting the fact that communists want global domination. That's the new world order. To establish global communism, that's the new world order. And that's a conspiracy. So communism is a conspiracy. The idea that communist China could have conspired against Donald Trump, um, you know, by at least by not um, shutting down the international airports um, from Wuhan when they knew they had a problem and instead lying to the United States about how bad the issue was, saying there was no human to human transmission, that China told the WHO, there was the World Health Organization, that there's no human to human transmission. Uh, and the WHO told Dr. Fauci, and Dr. Fauci told Donald Trump. So there could, there could really be a conspiracy against the president and against the United States from communist China using the World Health Organization uh, involving even someone like Dr. Fauci. Um, Dr. Fauci's concerning for many levels, uh, you know, his advice to shut down the economy I, I knew was from day one, that's going to cause an economic collapse. And we're going to see numbers we haven't seen since the Great Depression. And, and, and sure enough, that happened. I mean, 35% unemployment in California. Uh, that's worse than the Great Depression. The, great, the highest unemployment rate in the Great Depression was 25%. It was actually 24.9%. 35% unemployment in California. Hawaii. Uh, has, has, I think, something similar, about 35% unemployment. They're, they're a tourist uh, state. Uh, but wouldn't you know, right before this pandemic hit in February, when it, before it hit the United States, um, we were having record high stocks, record high S&P 500, record high 
uh, NASDAQ, we were having record highs, uh, you know, consistently, actually. We were breaking the record, and then the next week, breaking the record again. And then came the, uh, the virus out of Wuhan during an election year. Um, Trump was riding the booming election right into the new, econ uh, right into the new election. Uh, no sitting president has ever lost an election when he's sitting on a good economy. So if China wanted to get rid of Trump, if the deep state wanted to get rid of Trump, they had to do something about the economy. And wouldn't you know, Dr. Fauci has a pandemic lab in Wuhan. Now, one year before this pandemic started, a Chinese scientist was caught at the airport trying to smuggle vials of SARS into the United States. He got caught. So they couldn't get it to the United States that way. How are they going to get it to the United States? Well, listen, communist China has no problem killing its own people. This virus um, takes out the weak, the elderly, the vulnerable, those who are a drag on the communist system. Because, uh, well, communism is, is like an insurance company. And if you have too many people pulling out, then you have putting in, uh, the insurance company collapses. Well, the same year, this year that we were having the best economy we, we've had in 50, 60 years, China was having the worst economy that they've had in 50, 60 years. They were doing really horrible. So don't put it past the, the communists to kill their own people. They have concentration camps in northern China. Uh, there's an estimated maybe 3 million people in these Chinese uh, concentration camps. So they set off this virus in Wuhan. It kills the weak, kills the elderly, travels to the United States to the airports, and uh, and does the and you know has the disguise of being natural. They say, oh, this this is a bat virus. It, yeah, I mean that's what the laboratory would do. They would go find bat viruses, bring them to the laboratory, and then give them the spike protein that they needed to be infectious to humans. So looking, the scientists are looking for the intermediate host. From bat, you know, like uh, the MERS outbreak went from bat to camel to human. The SARS outbreak in 02 to 03 went from bat to civets to humans. So they're looking, well, where's the intermediate host? It wasn't in the wet market. The viruses that the animals had at the wet market was uh, the human virus. So we were infecting the animals there. So they're looking and they, they analyze the genome of this virus and um, realize the highest affinity that this virus has is for the uh, human cells. So there's no intermediate host. Uh, there's no inter intermediate host at all. Um, the virus is more infectious to humans than bats. This virus is more infectious to humans than civets. This vi virus is more, but after humans, now here's the interesting thing. After humans, the most uh, infectious that this virus is to an animal is ferrets. And you think, well, why is that relevant? Well, like I was saying, gain of function research. They, in a laboratory, they will take these viruses through reverse genetics, give them the spike protein that they need to infect a human cell, and then they do what's called animal passaging. And animal passaging is when they will infect a ferret, and as the virus passes through a, a creature, through the cells of a creature, it's, it adapts to it. Ferrets have similar cells to humans. Uh, they have a similar ACE2 receptor to humans. So they would pass this virus through a ferret, and when the ferret dies, they, they take the virus out again and put it in a new ferret. And then when that, when that ferret dies, they take the virus out and put it in a new one. And they go on and on and on. They pass it through all of these animals in animal passaging until after passing it through a whole bunch of them, that virus is finely tuned for, uh, you know, and finely ad adapted, well adapted for human ACE2 receptors. Um, the research was done with H5, H5N, H5N9, I think, an influenza strain with ferrets back in 2011 that made influenza so um, contagious to these ferrets 
that eventually the ferrets uh, um, would infect each other just by being close to each other. So it became like airborne. And so they found out that COVID-19 um, is pre-adapted for human infection. It has the highest affinity for human ACE2 receptors. And after humans, the highest affinity it has is for ferrets, which is a laboratory creature that they use for this type of experimentation. So all the evidence at this point leads to a laboratory origin and laboratory enhancement. So communist China is on the move. They wrote a book in 1999 called Unrestricted Warfare. And Unrestricted Warfare talked about new weapons, things like biological weapons, viruses, um, man-made earthquakes, man-made tsunamis, uh, things of that nature. Now they had, um, I remember North Korea was, they did their first, uh, or they, they, they caused a man-made earthquake in North Korea two years ago. There was headline news, it was from an explosion. So they created, I guess, a 2.5 earthquake. Now once, so, th so they're doing man-made earthquakes and man-made earthquakes lead to man-made tsunamis. And that's the type of thing that Unrestricted Warfare talked about. Uh, China is another interesting thing. China is having this border dispute with India. And the headlines was that they might go into full-on combat. And then the very next day, it says India is getting hit um, with a plague of locusts. You know, swarms and swarms out of nowhere right locust that came so india is already dealing with coronavirus then they're dealing with china was invading their border because china is trying to increase its national security so it wants taiwan it wants hong kong and it wants parts of this indian border because everything china is doing right now is preparing for war they want to secure their their national security so i just looked up is there a way that you could weaponize locust and sure enough it was discovered back in like 2016 that serotonin will take these loners, locusts are normally loners, and, and serotonin will make them uh, hoard uh, in gangs and swarm in gangs uh, so that you have these, these uh, you know, plagues of locusts. So those are the types of weapons China is interested in. Man-made earthquakes, man-made tsunamis, biological weapons, viruses, locusts. Uh, if, if this virus, think about this. If this virus came from a Wuhan laboratory and was released maybe on purpose by these communists, um, then they have killed, you know, uh, 300,000 people worldwide without even uh, starting a war, without even shooting a bullet it would be what they call a a bloodless war on an invisible battlefield um here's the interesting thing china says that the united states created the virus in fort detrick maryland and brought it to wuhan in october when wuhan had the military olympic games that's what they're saying well, uh, that's, the, that's the conspiracy theory of communist China, that they're feeding their, their media to, to tell their people that this virus was man-made in an American laboratory and brought to Wuhan during the October Wuhan Military Olympic Games. Well, here's the interesting thing. When the pandemic started, who went to the Wuhan lab but the top bio expert of China, um, her name is uh, Major General Chen Wei, Chen Wei. I don't speak Chinese. I don't know how they say their names. Major General Chen Wei went to the Wuhan lab and took control after the pandemic started. So there's a military connection here with this Wuhan lab. They're convinced that the virus was spreading during the military Olympic Games in October. And I just thought if China wanted to release this virus on purpose, that would be the ideal time, the Wuhan Military Olympic Games. 
because that at least had the potential to um, infect the military that was there, the athletes that were there, who would then bring it back to their bases all over the world. I mean, that would be a strategic time, a strategic location for China to, to unleash a biological weapon. China, at least, is saying that the virus started spreading in October during those games. But viruses are contagious. The reason people don't like biological weapons, the reason governments don't like bio biological weapons, they can backfire, they can spread to anybody, they don't know borders. So, you know, Wuhan had this, this, this major outbreak. And maybe, they, now they're saying the first people that, that went to the hospital, the first conformed cases, had no history with the wet markets. But I wonder, did they have a history of going to the Wuhan Olympic military games? Uh, were they in attendance there? So there's lots of details that people aren't telling you. You're not hearing much on how all of this plays into China's Thousand Talents program, which the FBI counterintelligence says is China's espionage program. You haven't heard about these viruses being stolen out of American laboratories and sent to Wuhan, like we saw in Winnipeg. You're not being told that Dr. Fauci was funding the lab or that Bill Gates is a member of the Chinese Academy of, Sci of Sciences. And you're not being told that the Wuhan lab uh, you know, is part of China's covert biological weapons program, which, by the way, uh, the, they try to exploit not just dual-use research or gain-of-function research. They try to exploit our grant programs. They exploit our universities, our laboratories, but they exploit our grants through the National Institute of Health. And that funding that was going to the Wuhan lab uh, was coming from the National Institute of Health. These are the types of games these communists are playing. Um, so 763 pages, I think, is what my book is. I didn't even get to post it on Amazon. They already they just looked at the cover, looked at the inside, and said, uh, we're not going to let you publish this on Amazon. So it's already banned on Amazon. It's a, it's a forbidden book. You know, it's forbidden knowledge. But it's all well-documented facts. I have 2,300 sources in my book. So, uh, anyways, I can go on and on about everything that's, uh, that's going on. I'm, con I'm telling you, keep a close eye on Taiwan. Keep a close eye on Hong Kong. China already has exerted uh, national security uh, laws over Hong Kong. Uh, China already threatened Taiwan with an uh, invasion. Uh, the Chinese military are training for island invasions. Taiwan says it's its own country and it's been its own country for 50 to 100 years. China says Taiwan is just a province in rebellion that one day will be reconciled. And, uh, and China's stealing the border of uh, India. Um, everything China's doing is preparing itself for war, building biological weapons, invading American laboratories. The technology that they're stealing from us has to do with um, you know, aircraft, vehicles, uh, 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 chi you know, Chinese nationals who are abusing the visa program and coming here for, you know, forging, uh, identities that they're, they're, they're Chinese military and they're forging identities to come here under our, under our visa program. And they will, um, you know, try and send back uh, technology like cell phones, certain type of cell phone that's used to listen to, uh, noise underwater, and it's used for submarine detect, you know, detection. So everything China's doing is preparing itself for, for war. And something like a virus is how the Unrestricted Warfare book says that you can, um, you can weaken a stronger opponent when you're at a disadvantage and another nation is stronger than you. How do you gain an advantage? Well, it's through Unrestricted Warfare. It's through new weapons like biological weapons and things of that nature. So, I mean, I had to eventually just stop writing my book at 760 pages. I thought, you know, that's enough. Uh, the story is never ending because it's ongoing. I started, I started writing my book about uh, Fauci funding the Wuhan lab before it broke the news. I was in the middle of writing my book when the news, Newsweek uh, covered it. Um, there's so much to talk about. Vaccines, 
this new uh, messenger RNA vaccine that Moderna and uh, Fauci and Bill Gates have partnered on. Now, here's another thing. Isn't it, isn't it suspicious to you that those associated with the Wuhan lab are the same ones who are now about to make a bunch of money off of the drugs and vaccines? Same people. Bill Gates, Dr. Fauci, they partnered on Moderna. They partnered on um, the vaccine. Uh, Remdesivir was, again, Fauci uh, and um, this man named Ralph Barrick, who actually works at UNC Chapel Hill. And Ra Ralph Barrick is the one who trained the Wuhan lab on these gain-of-function experiments. And he's, he, he partnered with Remdesivir. He sent the remdesivir to Wuhan, and Wuhan, the Wuhan lab sent a patent to Europe to try and patent remdesivir with chloroquine back uh, January 31st. So, I mean, the same people that are associated with the origin of this pandemic, the same people associated with the Wuhan lab, are now the same people trying to reap the profits of these vaccines and, and drugs. No wonder someone like Dr. Fauci opposed hydroxychloroquine which is an old, cheap malaria drug that's been safely used for 50 years. And doctors all over the world were saying they were having great results with it. But Dr. Fauci was opposing it. Why? He has a conflict of interest. He's on the leadership council uh, for vaccines for the Bill Gates Foundation. And Bill Gates is investing billions of dollars into a vaccine. And then here comes a cheap malaria drug that not only um, uh, would, would help people who are already infected it would block it's a it's a um a spike protein inhibitor it will block the infection from spreading but as a protein uh, a spike protein inhibitor it will also um stop infection from starting so it's also it's it's vaccine and treatment at the same time now there's a paper on the national institute of health scientific paper from 2004 saying that chloroquine is an infective inhibitor for sars and another study in 2005, and another study in 2006. Now, you're going to tell me that the top infectious doctor in the country doesn't know about this research? That's his job to know. Of course he knows. But in reality, Fauci's a drug dealer. And uh, our medical system is run by a drug cartel who's not interested in cheap old drugs. They want new drugs. Uh, and the price difference... I mean, you're talking like $13 for chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine versus like, you know, $4,000 for remdesivir. Uh, big money to be made in a pandemic. Now, how is it that the new guy on the block for vaccines, who is Bill Gates, how is it that the new guy on the block is suddenly posed to uh, come out with this, uh, you know, novel vaccine for a novel virus, you know, the vaccine industry is hard to break into. A lot of old patents and a lot of old, you know, viruses. And you don't get a chance often for anything new. New patents and new viruses. And then here comes this novel coronavirus. And sure enough, Bill Gates has a vaccine ready to be submitted uh, long before the competition. Uh, so many suspicious things going on that I document in this book. Uh... So it's forbidden on Amazon. It's banned on Amazon. Uh, the only place you can get it is the link in my uh, description. Um, it's on lulu.com. And uh, we need to get the information out there. I think, uh, you know, there's some, uh, there's some troubling times ahead and we need to be informed. We need to be well prepared. Um, you know, if you, if you really, if people really knew um, what was going on inside those Wuhan labs, uh, and who was funding it? Um, I think that I think we'd be in a different scenario right now. Everyone is trusting Fauci and Bill Gates, and uh, these people I don't think are are the, these people aren't worthy of your trust. Uh, these people have been working with communist China to build nuclear reactors and to fund biological research. I wouldn't I wouldn't trust them to inject any chemicals from a vaccine into your body. Um, you know, so we're talking about spies, communists, billionaires, mad scientists. It sounds like a movie, but it's 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 real life. Um, it's an interesting book. It's an interesting read. And you know, are we are we going to go to war with with China? Uh, is 
are there forces at play right now that are that are trying to set up a uh, a new world order you know um these are the types of questions that that my book uh, answers so uh hey forget amazon uh lulu is where it's at so click the link in the description of my video and uh get the book for yourself get it for a friend or two and get this information out there Th this is this is information that there's people out there that want to keep it secret. Bill Gates doesn't want you to know this. Dr. Fauci doesn't want you to know this. The Wuhan lab doesn't want you to know this. The liberal media and the social media that's colluding with communist China on these things, they don't want you to know this, this stuff. So this is forbidden information uh, that, I, that I've uh, worked really hard uh, the past uh, month or more. Uh, to get it out to you guys. So well-documented facts. I'm not interested in wild conspiracy theories. Uh, I'm talking about facts. The Wuhan lab was experimenting with coronaviruses. That's a fact. They were making viruses infectious to humans by switching out the spike proteins. That's a fact. They, they published these experiments online. I, I, I quote from them. I show you these things. Fauci was funding the Wuhan lab. That's a fact. You know, Communist China launched the Thousand Talents program, an espionage campaign to steal cutting edge information and uh, proprietary information, cutting edge technology and viruses from our labs. It's a fact. You know, professors are being arrested all over the country uh, this past month and, and, and before. That's a fact. Um, you know, communism wants global domination. That's a fact. These aren't just conspiracy theories. Um, these are conspiracy facts. And we need to be we need to be informed so that we can make the best uh, possible decisions on uh, what's going on. So, all right. Well, I, like I said, I can go on and on, but you should probably just read the book. So click the link, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.